Good morning students. We are discussing on water resource engineering and hydrology. We are learning for water resource planning and its development. Well, in today's lecture, we will discuss about some steps that involved in planning of water resource development projects. Okay, so steps for the planning of water resource development that are uh, first is the statement of objectives the four steps to start the planning process that is the statement of objectives well what it says before the actual planning of a water resources development it is essential that the objective of the project should be clearly stated the objectives may however depend on the organization's planning for that project. For an example, a national government may have the broad goal of achieving the maximum economic and social benefits from the development of water resources. While the government of the state or the district which is prone to flood may have a single objective of reducing the flood damage within its boundaries. So similarly, the corporations or the metropolitan councillors or village panchayat needing water supply for irrigation facilities may have only such objectives to the extent justification or to extend the justified terms of benefits of their own residence so that the statement of objectives for the particular project is mandatory while the objectives of a project also depend on the availability of the fund if the fund are limited the project is implemented in a different different stages so the second stage that is the collection of data well, first, if we decided, if we give on the statement for about our project or about our objectives, then the next step to be followed, that is collection of data of relevant things. Well, uh, for a realistic and accurate planning, it is essential that the collection of data should be reliable. So, how we can say the data is reliable? If we talk about some general data that we need to collect, that is a first physical data that includes the location, size, then physiography, climatic history, population. The second is the hydrological data where in that data we need to collect the precipitation amount, evaporation, transpiration, sedimentation and the water quality of that particular area. The next data that we need to collect that is the geological data. Well, uh, this geological data includes the exploration, geological formations, soil survey, uh, the rate of erosion, groundwater minerals, okay, then the cartographic data. Well, in the cartographic data, uh, we need to collect the topographical uh, situations as well as we have to draw some maps that are the, like contour maps and etc. Okay, then ecological data should be collected and those are the type of vegetations, then uh, fish and wildlife availability. Okay, so these are the ecological data. Then uh, the demographic data that includes the people, that is the population over that particular area and the population which will affect it from this particular project and the institutions. Then the economic data like industries, the transportation, uh, then the communications, marketing, uh, then the recreational tourism data, the effect on tourism, then the taxis, land, etc. So these are the economic data that we need to collect. Then some legal data that are the water rights and the population control, land ownership, etc. Public opinion data and data on existing projects. So these are the list of general data that we need to collect in the second step of the planning. 
so these are just a general data then some specific data also should be taken and those specific data are first irrigation which includes the land classification crop water requirements etc okay also ha huh, climatic data also climatic data includes uh, in this specific data then some municipality water supply data that the need of drinking water the need of industrial water the quality of water that uh, we need to give so all this data will come under the municipality water supply data then hydropower data that is the need of electricity from that particular project as well as the variation in the power generation power demand uh, then the alternative energy sources available uh, when uh, there may be any cut off uh, with this hydropower data then the flood control data records that is about uh, record of the past flood the damages from that uh, past flood all this data should also be uh, taken for the planning of the water development project then navigational data recreational data and the population control data these are also uh, very important data that should be collected uh, when planning for the water development project the third that is the projections for planning all the water resources development projects are usually planned to meet not only the present need but also for the future needs while well, depending upon the life of the project this need or the future need should be collected all the water resources development projects are usually planned to meet not only the present need but also to fulfill the needs of future that depending upon the life of the project okay so for this purpose the projection of future need is required to be made from the data that is collected while the projections should not be made as a simple extrapolation of the past growth rate well social economic and technological developments of the region may also cause the significant changes in the trend and therefore the future growth rate may be quite different from the past growth rate the projections should include the study of future population land use water requirements for the various uses likely changes in the patterns well if the projections are on a lower side the project will not serve the required purpose so on the other hand if the projections are unrealistically high then this project will be over designed and it would lead to excessive investment that will not be economic also so the projection for the planning is necessary for the development project plan while well, the fourth step that is the project formulation once the basic data and the projection of the future needs are obtained the actual formulation of the project can commence first of all a list of all the possible alternatives is prepared such a list should be comprehensive so after the various alternatives are listed the first step in the project formulation is to define the boundary conditions which will restrict the project well these restrictions or these restraints may help to eliminate some of the alternatives from the consideration and thus it simplify the process of project formulation while well, the next step is to define the land use plans for each of the possible project units as the land use plans influence the water requirement for each of the catalog project units preliminary cost estimates are prepared fifth one that is the project evaluation while well, to select the unit or the combination of units which is economically most efficient or not this step is mandatory if the most 
efficient unit has benefit cost ratio more than one or any other specific or the specified minimum value the unit may be recommended for construction and if an alternative individual unit is completely independent from both physically and economically of all other units it may be evaluated alone so these are the steps uh, that involved in the planning of water resource development projects well let's see some environmental aspects in the water resource planning well a multiple project involving the construction of a large dam can have several effects on the environment also well some of these impacts may adversely affect the ecology and environment while some other may uh, prove the beneficial to the environment also so let's see both the aspect of water resource planning that is a beneficiary for the environment and as well as some aspect those are negative to the what uh, to the environment so starting with the first that is the negative impact of uh, water resource planning on the environment while formulating environmental impact statement for the project few uh, adverse effect may be uh, noticed and highlighted that the first is loss of wildlife habitat while loss of the wildlife habitat and possible extin extinction of rare species of the flora and fauna of the area likely to be caused by submergence of the vast tract of the forest that should be examined second that is the loss of valuable forest land so that should also be examined like uh, consequent loss of wood particularly fuel woods okay those are examined while you are uh, planning for the development project okay because if uh, we are if, if we will if we will cut uh, such forestation if we cut some forest land that will loss to the environment okay then the loss of agricultural land that is due to the submergence and consequent loss of food and non food crops so this should be studied adverse impact to the fish well adverse impact are caused to fisheries as the fish is not likely to find the original rapid flow and sea water environment in the river downs so the dam will also check and prevent the free up and down movement of the migratory fish then the loss of religious sites rehabilitation of people so the displacement and rehabilitation of people living in this area that coming under the submergence may lead to overall misery and public distress so this factor is extremely important and must be uh, must be well planned with compassion and liberal spendings then the loss of adventure sports and river rafting the growing pressure of civilization and industrialization on a nearby areas then the post project effects and the reservoir that induced seismicity so these are the negative impact that is on environment for the water resource development and plan now the positive impacts are that the improvement in the public health increase in crop production development of tourism and recreation then the excellent habitat for fisheries and bird lake created by the dam provides an excellent habitat for the fisheries and the water liking birds then the hydroelectric power plant is without the fuel consumption okay next is the improvement in the microclimate that is caused in the adjoining areas due to evaporation from the open water surfaces of the reservoir and the development of centuries and wildlife and the last that is the overall improved oxygen production from the water resource okay so these are the positive impact that is on the environment okay so i hope 
students you understand this properly thank you so much for your kind attention i will see you in the next lecture